Hey everybody, welcome back to Wicked Sports. This is Power Play, and we're joined, as always, by Chris Uminski. Chris, how you doing? I'm doing good, Brian. How are you? Doing quite well. Ready to talk a little bit of Bruins uh, hockey. What What's happening with the Bruins? So the um, Bruins having like an okay season right now. We're quarter way through the season. They've mm. there's definitely been some points where we've been struggling, mostly mostly on the back end. The mm. The the offense still lo- still looks fine. First and second line are great as usual. Mm-hmm. Um, the biggest thing going on with the Bruins right now is there's some goalie drama. What else? What else? What else is new? <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, hey, we we talked about it like right when the season ended that this was a potential like source of drama coming, and and here it is. Yes. So, as everybody knows, Tuka Rask has been hurt. He had to have some pretty serious surgery. He was initially projected to be coming back in February. Mm-hmm. It looks like the timeline has moved up, and he's actually now started practicing with the Bruins. Wow. Okay. So, that was sudden. Because, yeah, like you said, we weren't expecting to even hear from Tuka for a while. So, I mean, does do you know how he's been looking at these practices, or what's I mean, up? I mean, I guess he's been taking shots. Mm. which is good but this is all strange to me because he's he's technically a free agent right now he still hasn't signed anything with the Bruins that's very interesting that that can't be a normal thing right no yeah I don't I don't think so I've never heard of it right now he's skating with the Bruins and Mm -hmm. in their practices um but he hasn't signed so technically he's listed as an emergency backup goalie okay so what would have to happen for him to play? Not that this is a thing that will ever happen, but um, I, uh, I've heard of people. But guess, this very notably did happen to a team last year. I don't know. Yeah. Am I, am I imagining that like the Zamboni driver was playing? Okay. That's not something that I just had a fever dream about. All right. This is good. So, hey, um, it, you could do worse than, than a former, you know, great player. You could have – just some guy. Guy who won. Um, yeah, who won? I, hey. <laughs> Shout out that guy. David Ayers. Um, yeah, so what would have to happen for him to play right now is if mm. both Jeremy Swayman and Linus Olmark are unavailable to play for whatever reason. Right now, mm. like he's – who goes like on the team, but he's not. Um, mm. He'd probably be the one that they'd call up if that happened. Right. Um, but the big question is what happens if and when he comes back right now it's trending like he's going to because mm-hmm. right now like we have a fairly decent tandem I think Jeremy, Jeremy Swayman has looked has looked hot as he always does I um, mean Linus Olmark has been good too mm-hmm. um, I personally think that Swayman is the better goalie of the two but if mm-hmm. Tuka comes back which who do you demote right and you would you would hope that Swayman stays stays. I per, I personally hope that it's Swayman, but mm. I guess the argument is like, Venus Allmark is is a veteran of the league. He's been around for a while, right? Um, and Jeremy Swayman is a, is a rookie, mm. or like in his second NHL season, but first full season. Um, right. So it's so like, do you keep do you keep the guy who I guess. I don't know if unproven is the right word. But like, do you keep the guy with less experience or do you keep mm-hmm. the, or do you keep the veteran? Yeah. I mean, we see very similar situations in football. It's the only sport I'm really an expert on. So with the quarterback. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, we see like, I just talked to Jack about the saints. The saints drafted a rookie quarterback from Notre Dame in the fourth round. Um, but they were playing taste. Uh, well, they weren't playing Taysom Hill, but more specifically and more like this situation, they were playing Trevor Simeon, who is a veteran and has been around, but doesn't really have the upside of a of a younger player. Would that be kind of a similar situation here? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I was just like, yeah, you know, you. You probably trust the veteran more, but you can probably get yeah. more out of developing the younger player and keeping him up and getting him that experience that he doesn't have. Yeah, and also, and I also like to 
the thing with Tuka Raskin, I love I love Tuka, but mm. the thing about him that annoys me is that he is so up and down yeah. lately as as he gets older. Um, mm. So, like, if he gets hurt again or if he decides to take another leave of absence like he tends to do, mm. um, like, who do, you want, who do you want the other guy to be? Do you want Linus Olmark, who's, who's – he's okay, or do you want yeah. Jeremy Swayman, who we already know is good? Yeah. No, I, hey, I, I agree with you. I think, I think you go with the young blood. You, you keep him there, and you just hope that, uh, you know, Tuka doesn't take a leave of absence, or if he does, that uh, not, you know, being the starter doesn't, like, mess with Swayman very much. Because that's another thing, too. Like, Swayman's getting a lot of time right now, right? Like, it... him, right now, it's, right now it's been about 50 50. Swayman yeah. has been playing a little more than Olmark in the last couple of weeks. Mm. Um, but they still get their fair share of games in. Right. What would you expect if Tuka came back? Let's say Tuka's healthy. You know, it's it's you know he's older, but he's still Tukarask. He's still you know a Stanley Cup starting caliber goalie. Um, would you expect him to get like fifty fifty splits, or would would it go like mostly to Tuka in that situation? Coming back, he's absolutely going to be the. The top the top line goalie. Mm-hmm. Um, there there really isn't a question about that. Right. Um, and then, but again, like we'll have to see how how he plays going down the road because we talked about before. I think Jeremy Swayman could easily swipe that out from under him. Yeah, just be the guy, and probably will yeah. be the guy eventually. Oh yeah, a hundred percent. So yeah, it, that, that's going to be an interesting thing to to track, and obviously it's not happening yet, too, because the emergency goalie. Well, um, you'll know you'll know when it happens. Yeah, we'll we'll definitely cover it, but uh, something to keep an eye on. Uh, speaking of keeping an eye on things, I don't know if that's a good transition. You want to talk <laughs> a little bit of Ovechkin, as I butcher so, his name. So in today's episode of Ov Watch. Mm-hmm. Um, Alex Ovechkin has hit another milestone. He scored his 750th career goal. Jesus. Um, which that puts him 16 goals behind Yarmir Yager. He easily mm-hmm. breaks that maybe before the new year. I don't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yager's going to come back now. He's going to be like, hey, what is this? <laughs> I get back out oh. here. I assume he's still playing somewhere. Oh, yeah. he's He plays in the same league as David Krejci. Oh, see? <laughs> Um, Jeez. and then he's fifty. He's fifty behind Gordy Howe. He'll mm-hmm. break that if if he doesn't do it this year. He'll that'll definitely be next year. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's number that's number two and three. Yep. So the only after Gordy Howe, the only one is Wayne Gretzky. The the goat, and as it were. Ovech, Ovechkin's thirty six years old, mm. but it's not unheard of for hockey players to play into their forties. Gordy Howe mm. played until he was fifty one. Jesus Christ! Yeah, so, <laughs> that's so crazy to be considering how physical hockey is, and like when the season's over, they'll just be like, "Oh yeah, uh, my spleen's been lacerated for the last eight <laughs> months, but I had to cut it out," you know. For <laughs> like. Patrice Bergeron played, or yeah, it was Bergeron played a uh, few games last year with broken ribs and didn't tell anybody. Yeah, it's insane. These people are insane. But I guess that's why they play so long. Yes. Oh man. So, what do you think the realistic shot that he catches Gretzky, passes him, all that? If he plays until his forty, there's no question in my mind that yeah. that he passes Sorry. Gretzky. That would be insane. Because, like, I feel like. I don't know. I mean, obviously his total points are pretty insurmountable. Like, you can't ever catch Gretzky there. But I, I felt like the goal thing was one of those records where it's like, whoa, will anyone ever get there? But I guess, you know, eventually someone does. I, I felt the same way when I was younger. When I saw Dan Marino had, like, 420 touchdowns, I was like, no one's going to fucking throw that many. And now he's going to be, like, probably 10th in a few years, like – you know, it it just it's how it goes, right? Tom Tom Brady's blowing him out of the water. Yeah, right now. exactly. Yeah. Like he's he's way ahead of him, and Drew Brees was ahead of him by a lot too. So, yeah. Well, like Wayne Gretzky is ninety goals ahead of Gordy Howe. So mm-hmm. Ovechkin could break Gordy Howe's record, but then he still has to score ninety more goals to. That's, he could do yeah. in, 
he could do probably in two seasons. If right. he's, if, yeah. Player of his caliber, like four fifty a year. <laughs> he just yeah goes beast mode and just knocks it out real quick. <laughs> no big deal. Just returns to like in the the twenty five year old version of himself. Say, this is Russian, Russian machine don't break. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, but yeah, I'm sure like. This has been fun for all hockey fans to just kind of watch it, see. It's, I mean, it's exciting when someone, you know, creeps up on a record. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, uh, yeah, I mean, anything else you want to touch on in this episode? I know you said uh, uh, there's an article on Twitter. I saw you about David Krejci, like, will he come back to the Bruins? And you on Twitter were like, no, no, no way. Is that, yeah, <laughs> still feel that way. <laughs> There's a weird cult of Bruins fans out there that are like, no, Krejci will come back. He'll, he'll, he'll resign. We'll... And I'm just like, no, he's not. He's, he's gone. It was a hell of a run. But Let him go. Gone. Yeah. Oh, man. All right. Any, anything else you want to talk about? Oh, just um, trying to pay attention to where Jake DeBrusque might end up. I guess there's a lot of teams interested. Um, and from what I know, the Bruins are looking for, are going to be looking for help on on the blue line for that, which is, gives me hope. <laughs> All right, so we'll keep an eye out there. Chris, where can we find you on uh, Best spot on hockey Twitter, Chris underscore Yuminski. The best hockey memes, best hockey news, best hockey takes. Yes, so go follow him there. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at the Fake Bumar, that's B-N-A-R-R. Channel is on Twitter at Wicked Good Sport, or at WG Everything on Instagram, at Wicked Good Everything on Twitch, at twitch.tv slash Wicked Good Everything, and on TikTok. Search where you get everything or search where you get sports. Chris, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. We'll see you all in the next one.